Welcome to the TMC Newsroom. My name is Rich Tarani. As always, thanks for watching. We are at the uh, Cloud Expo 2011 in Manhattan. On our program today is Dory Exterman. He's the CTO of Zoriax. Hello, Dory. Hello. Nice meeting you. So tell me about Zoriax. What do you guys do? Uh, we exist for more than 10 years. Uh, we have a unique technology that enables us uh, by installing a simple agent on each machine to create automatically a private cloud uh, which enables each workstation to utilize all the CPUs and memory available in the network instead of only the local CPU in the machine. This is done uh, by uh, hooking into the Windows API processes which enable us to uh, provide this service to, uh, to our customer, to their product simulation or a very long computational processes uh, and they can use it to accelerate these processes by uh, 30, 40 times faster with no changes to the source code, no images, uh, image banks, uh, no special uh, setups or anything like it, only by simply uh, installing our uh, agent in each computer they want to participate in this private cloud. So basically, um, utilizing assets which are not being fully utilized on the desktop. Yeah, yeah. We know how to utilize ideal CPU. It is totally configurable. You can say that uh, if a computer is uh, using more than 20% of his CPU, you don't want him to take part in uh, this uh, process of uh, helping other computational processes. Uh, and actually, what we do is uh, we, we, are, we are enabling uh, the acceleration of uh, processes and simulation uh, quite seamlessly. The only thing you need to do is tell us which are the processes that you spawn that you want us to distribute to various uh, computers and we handle all of it for you. You, know, you don't need to write any source code, any special API for it. Uh, we do everything in the background for you and uh, instead of how many processes can you spawn in one local machine, uh, four, five, six, eight, when you have all the network, all the private network in your fingertips, you can really accelerate stuff and use, you know, run even 100, 200 parallel processes. So who are your typical customers right now that are looking at this kind of... Uh, we have more than 2,000 customers using uh, our product currently. Uh, more than 20% of the Fortune 100 company are extensively using our product. Uh, we have a, a very known product uh, based on this technology uh, by the name of Incredibuild, which is accelerating uh, Visual Studio builds the same way we can accelerate any other thing. We accelerate Visual Studio builds by uh, 30 times faster than usual builds. It is used by, it's heavily used by uh, uh, companies that take a lot of time to build their product. You know, it, it cuts time from 20 hours to 40 minutes, and it's really useful for the end developer, which sometimes need to wait for two, three hours in order for its build to, uh, to complete, and now we only need to take a small coffee break and come back, and uh, this is it. So uh, the same way and the same uh, technology we use for uh, Visual Studio can be used for other computational, long computational uh, processes. It is used by uh, the financial industry, uh, healthcare, uh, uh, medical research, uh, energy field, uh, usually simulations, data manipulations, uh, all kinds of processes that take a lot of time. Video rendering, we are used by more than 85% of the gaming industry. We have solutions for uh, uh, all sorts of uh, make file, video rendering. Uh, we are used by uh, uh, Xbox, uh, gaming, uh, PlayStation 3, Nintendo 3DS, uh, all sorts of gaming. Now, how old is your company? More than 10 years. So, 16 years ago, Cunix was a company that popularized the same concept, and um, Canadian-based company, and they um, they kind of fizzled out in terms of this the same concept. I, I the last time I heard them talk about this to me at a trade show was Computer Telephony Expo in Los Angeles in 1998. I haven't heard them talk about it, and most recently, Cunix. Now, I think they added the browser to the BlackBerry Playbook. So, I don't know what they've been doing. I know they've got some um, some other uh, real-time operating system things that they do. I have a question. Do you 
how do you compete with what they used to do or what they're currently doing? And it, it, this concept, which made a lot of sense to me in the 90s, and I thought it was a huge deal, seemed to take a break and now it seems to be popular. Yeah. What happened? I think that uh, there are a lot of players in this, uh, in this field. Uh, once it was known as grid computing, today it is more known as uh, HPC, that you take a cluster of computers for high uh, processing uh, uh, computational processes. Uh, I think that the main thing uh, that differenti differentiates us from other solutions is the, is the element that you don't need to change your source code. I, need, I think that by uh, all the other grid computing uh, solutions, uh, which make it much difficult to use, require you to change your architecture, to write especially for the grid, to interface with the API of the grid provider, which takes a lot of time, takes a lot of QA, takes a lot of knowledge of the infrastructure this specific provider supply you with. Uh, what we do enables our customer to do it seamlessly. The only thing they need to do is write the names of the processes they want to uh, distribute in a small XML file everything is done for them. So I think that in terms of uh, uh, application that is currently all being developed or you know, already pre-developed, uh, sometimes changing all the architecture in order to gain a computational acceleration can be uh, something that is very costly. Now, uh, you've, got, you've got, within a machine, you've got a um a powerful processor, a very fast bus, and, and lots of memory. So when, when you're moving an application to the network where it's sharing processors and sharing memory over the network, do you need to ensure that your network is as fast as it possibly can be to, to take advantage of, of this uh, technology? Uh, it depends on what you want to do. If you have a simulation which usually needs a lot of CPU power but have very few I.O inside them, so the network is not so important. If you have a lot of I.O., yeah, you need, you need a strong network in order to uh, pass all the data between the uh, computers. Because the network, network becomes the bus, really, becomes yes. the computing bus, right, yes. to some yeah. degree. Uh, no, because it depends on what you need to do. We are mainly focused on, uh, on uh, processes that need high CPU, okay. intensive CPU processing power, for example, uh, you know, uh, simulations that require to process uh, many uh, numbers, to do a lot of computing. Uh, so this, is, this really fits it. Sometimes we have a simulation that takes weeks to be done. So uh, okay. if you are running them only on the local machine. So when you can distribute them to hundreds of computers, you know, it's really, really doing it faster. So what's next for your company? What's next? I think uh, publishing it to as uh, many customers as uh, possible. I think uh, one of the things we are aiming to uh, and we already started doing is uh, providing uh, some kind of hybrid solution which enables you not only to work on the private network but also going to the public, uh, public cloud. Um, simplifying uh, our process of uh, implementation, though it is very, very easy to use. Uh, and, you know, always performance is one of our uh, main topic, so uh, we are always uh, accelerating our performance, our product performance, and I think uh, this is something we aim to in the future. And it's a private company? Yeah, it's a privately held company. How big? Uh, that we have something like uh, 30 people in the company. We have uh, a major branch in Israel. We have a branch in Japan. Uh, it's good, it's doing it's good. Great. Yeah. Well, thanks for being on the program. Thank you very Pleasure much. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah, you too.